If you've been having iOS 14 through 12 for a long time now, you've probably been noticing the app called Files. Now, Files is just a normal file storaging app, but I feel like it's lacking some features. I found this new app called Documents, and it has way more features than Files, and it's actually way better. Now, if you don't know what Documents is, it's also a file storaging app, but it has much more. Documents is made by Riaddle, and you can get it from the link in the description, and it looks something like this. Now I'll show you why you should switch to Documents. Now, when moving to a new app, you probably don't want to have to move everything right away. And this is the great thing with Documents, because you can access everything just from this app. If you see here, there's your files, Apple files. You can also access your iTunes files if you connect your phone to iTunes. And there's also your photo album. So you can view everything here. And also you can download stuff. Well, that's just a different thing. But if you go ahead and click on connections at the bottom bar, you can actually see much more connections that you can add to documents. So what we're gonna do is just click on connections at the bottom and then we can add a new connection. Now in documents, some more connections you can make is like Google Drive. If you have Google Drive, you can connect that box. I don't know what that is. OneDrive by Microsoft and Dropbox if you want to too. Also, if you have a server, you can connect to that from this side too. There's also something called SharePoint and Yandex.disk. I don't know what those are, but if you have them, you can connect them. That's just the great thing about documents. You can connect so many things so you can access everything from just this one app. Now, once you add any of these connections, they'll show up as a list when you click on connections. If you add a server or a service like Google Drive, it'll show up as a list when you click on connections. And in those, you can actually edit it with documents. And it's actually really cool. There's a lot of features. And it's a lot more than iOS files. Another cool thing that I think iOS files should implement into their app is that you can actually play videos picture in picture. So let's just say you have a file, a video file that you want to play in the background or just as a picture in picture. You can actually go to that file, like I'm just going to access it through my photo album and then just select one video. I'm just going to select this video that I've made. It's called scribble.io. I'll leave a link to it in the description or a card. You can actually just click on the home screen and it'll actually just play picture in picture. This is really cool because on iOS files you really can't do this. You can only just play the audio in the background, but on documents you can actually do picture in picture and you can play audio in the background. So documents just makes this really easy and I think it's just way better because you can access your photos. It doesn't have to be on documents, you can access your photos and play it picture in picture. If you swipe it over to the left, it'll actually only play the audio, which is also really cool. Now this is kind of an add-on to the first thing I talked about, which is connections. If you want to access these files, these exact files from anywhere in the whole world with your computer, you can actually connect this to your computer by clicking on connections again, and then there'll be a little computer option, which will actually generate a code which you can access onto your computer. So just go click on the bottom bar and then just click on connections, and then just click on computer with that little red symbol, and it'll generate a code which only you have and you can enter into this website that shows here, docstransfer.com, and you can just access the same exact files that you have on documents on your computer. So you can actually transfer photos from your phone to your computer like this too, which is also really cool, because you have to do that with iTunes by connecting a cable, so it's just easier with documents. If you work with files a lot, you've probably heard of FLV or MKV files, and these are actually not supported by iOS files, so it can't read that. But if you have documents, you can actually read these files, and it actually runs perfectly fine. So I have four videos in this folder, which all are not supported by Apple. Now these are FLV, um, AVI, MKV, and WMV. These actually run and they play normally. And you can see this, if I tap on it, it'll run. It's just the video I just recorded, and if I test these other three out, it actually works. Now, even if you have photos, there's some photo types that iOS files cannot read, and there's some just other types of files that you cannot read. 
Another file type documents can read is HTML files. It can actually read HTML pages. Now this is just a bonus thing, but documents actually has its own built-in browser. Now the automatic browser it uses is Google, but you can actually change that if you click on settings at the top left. But this is just a normal browser. There's not really anything that good about it. It's just like Safari basically. You can download stuff if you want to. And I also have downloaded stuff. This is just my game that I've made. It's on Windows. I just downloaded the raw file, but I mean the zip file, but that's just demonstrating the downloads. And also if you actually click on the top right, there's actually three dots and you can edit the page more or not edit. You can save it as a PDF. You can do more than on Safari. If you see here, save as a PDF, save page. But other than that, it's just a normal browser. Now, if you're going to be downloading a lot of files on this app, you might come across zip files, which are just compressed files, which you can use to download folders. Now, I have a zip file on my page, which is actually a game I made. It's on mothercraft.com, and the link will be in the description. But you can actually download a zip file if you have a Windows computer, or you can do it on your phone too, which I'm just going to be demonstrating. But it actually gives you a zip file. And on documents, you can actually unzip files without even just doing anything. You just tap on it and it'll just unzip. So it's ready now, and if I tap on it, it'll just unzip itself. And you can view all the files. Now, one thing I use mostly from this app is connecting to servers. Now, to do that, you can actually go to connections, and like I've said before, is adding a connections. And I want to talk about these four types of servers. Web Dev Server, FTP Server, SFTP Server, and Windows SMB. I personally use the Windows SMB a lot to see my files that I've stored on a shared local drive. Now all you need to do is just add the login password and the URL which is basically your IP in there and you can actually access this server. If you have a server at work or just anywhere that you want to access, you can just put in the URL if you have it shared or port forwarded and then you can just access it from anywhere in the whole entire world. Which I think is awesome because I don't really have to keep on connecting a hard drive to my computer or my phone, or I don't know how I'd connect a hard drive to my phone. So this is just really easy to access all of your files from a server. Now all three of these other servers, I don't really know what they're used for, but it's probably similar, but I don't really use them. So SFTP server, FTP server, web dev server, I've heard of those before, but I just don't know what they are. You can actually connect them if you want. Now, if you're actually going to be using this app, you probably don't want others to see your files. So there's some settings to change that. So there's some security settings. From that, you can put like a passcode and touch ID and stuff like that. Now, to get to these security settings, you just have to click on settings, which is at the top left, and then click on security. Now, there's a passkey lock and touch ID. I recommend not enabling require immediately because if you accidentally just click the home screen, it'll immediately ask you for a password, which I don't really like. So I just keep that on off. So it just requires for a password when you've like closed it or you turned off your phone. If you've been looking at the bottom, you might have been seeing a VPN. And yes, Documents actually has their own VPN. Now if you actually click on it, it says that there's a start button. You can actually click on a server and you can access basically any country. This is really cool, but the fact is you have to pay for it or you can only get 50 megabytes free every single day. Now, 50 megabytes, that's not really that much because if you're watching a video, it'll just go down really quickly. These are all the servers you have, but if you wanna pay for this service, it's actually $80 a year. So if you wanna pay for that, that's cool because it has a lot of servers that you can connect to. There's a lot of countries. If you're worried about safety, you can just look at their privacy policy and just read that. But the free version of the VPN is not that usable. Now, the iOS Files app is actually really good for what it's meant to do. I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but Documents just has way more features. There's like a built-in browser, a built-in VPN. There's just more things that you can connect to it. You can access everything just from the app. So if you decide to use this app, please leave a like and subscribe because I make videos like this once a week 
So just turn on notifications so you never miss another video.